Hello everybody, this is Chris Mackey and this is your 22nd tutorial on Honeybee Energy Simulation. And, uh, and I know I guess I had mentioned a couple videos back that, that we would have three, three uh, videos on schedules, but I, I think so. We're going to do something that's slightly related to, uh, to schedules in Energy Plus, and that is, that is we're going to focus on thermostat set points. Uh, and setbacks in in this in this uh, specific tutorial, uh, and the reason why I guess they're tangentially related to to schedules is because usually Energy Plus assigns them as schedules. Usually, will Energy Plus yeah will will include those numbers of uh, of thermostat set points in uh, in schedules. Um, so, but I mean, but we have a sort of different way of of assigning them in in Honeybee, which I think you'll find is is much easier than trying to create your own. Uh, well, particularly your own uh, uh, set point schedule that's that's you know has particular temperatures in it. So, all right. So first off, I mean, you guys know. All right, I know this is a huge. It's becoming a huge file now. This is this is a big energy model now that we've really customized to my family's house um, that you see in the Rhino scene here. Um, but really, all that we're worried about here, you guys don't have to worry about all of this setup that we've done in the past few videos if you're just coming in right now. All that you have to know is that we're just going to be modifying the zones that are coming out, the ones, you know, that have all of these modifications that have happened, you know, back through all each one of these these steps. Uh, and now we're just going to modify them again to, to account for our new set points uh, that we may want to do. And so, I mean, so set points are particularly important, that I will say, because they're directly related to the energy use. Of uh, of this of your building, and you know, and if you can c convince occupants to to you know let the thermostat go up higher, and you know, in the in the 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 uh, summer, you know, such that it's not cooling until it gets actually very hot, then you can really save actually a lot of energy. It's been shown that I mean, actually every degree what was it every degree Celsius of heating. And Britain was supposed to save 10% of all heating energy across the, the, the country. If you know, So, I mean, so there are huge amounts of savings in this. And so that's why we felt it was very important to include it in Honeybee. Um, and that is why if you go under the, the 8 tab of, uh, of Honeybee Energy, you will see that there is a, uh, uh, um, let's see, specifically want this Honeybee Set Energy Plus Zone Thresholds. And I know, yeah, I know that that component doesn't have uh, the word um, uh, you know set point in it, but but it, I, I can tell you that it certainly does have the ability to adjust that in there. So if you guys drag and drop uh, that onto the canvas right there. Um, you guys will see it's I mean you know this workflow right now you hook up some honeybee zones you get some honeybee zones out with modified properties so that's what I'm going to do right off the bat first is I'm going to hook up our our HB zones that we've been modifying all throughout here these, these zones which by the way you're seeing visualized in the interface if you're just kind of coming into the series right now um, but I'm going to hook them up there and uh, and yeah and we'll get out honeybee zones that you know that can be modified based on these other inputs that we're going to uh, put in here and so you see we get the option to change a few things Thing. So there's a daylight threshold, uh, which I think right now it doesn't really do too much uh, for, for the zones. Um, I mean, or at least not really too much in terms of our energy simulation, but it should in the future, I think. We're, 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 uh, I think we're finding a way to work that in there. Um, but the more important one for, for this, this uh, simulation right now, it's, oops, okay, all right, we got to... Uh, okay, this one. By the way, if I, I'm bringing up the grasshopper with the Rhino window again, whatever. Because sometimes the, the graphics card sort of, you know, causes grasshopper to disappear for a second. If you just click on the little Rhino thing at the bottom of your your Windows uh, toolbar, you know, you'll, it'll come back. Anyway, I should have said that way early in the series because it can happen a few times when you're running intense calculations. But anyway, the ones that we're really concerned about. I mean, and you can see, I I don't know if actually if we put out stuff in the README here, but no, nah, all right, but but um, but. But essentially, you can change the cooling set point to anything in, in degrees Celsius, essentially. And so, so it's not actually telling you what the set points are. Well, actually, I guess you could find out what the set points are right now by visualizing the schedule. If you guys remember back here when we did schedules in the previous one, there is a cooling set point and a heating set point schedule for the mid-rise apartment. So you guys can visualize that and probably see, you know what, all right, it's probably worth it to do that right now. I mean, I know this is going to be redundant for some of you guys, but let's convert schedules to, uh, to values, and we know that we want to do that for the zone program of, uh, you know, of the mid-rise apartment. Uh, so let me, I don't know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go all the way back here and grab the mid-rise apartment. I'm kind of taking a shortcut here because we'll probably just, uh, you know, we'll delete this once we're done. But this is just to see what the set points are right now. So let's take the, the heating set point schedule to begin with. Um, and you know, and this should uh, convert this. Yeah, it converts it into a bunch of values. And now you guys remember from the previous videos that we can just visualize this on a 3D chart. Um, 
for which I will drop the x scale to uh, 0.25. Oh, come on. All right. Quotation mark 0.25. And uh, let's see. Yes, x scale. All right, just so we can see it easily in our rhino scene. And I'll connect up the values there, and it will draw us a 3D graph of these, these values of heating set points. And so we can actually, I mean, at least that's, that's one way to kind of see. We probably actually could have just looked at the values in a panel and kind of gotten a sense too. But this will, this will be good, I, I think, as well, because we'll, you know, we'll, we'll get a sense of what it looks like over the whole year. Um, all right, so give this a few seconds. Um, and we'll probably do the same for the cooling set point, maybe, just to find out what that is. Maybe, maybe we don't need to generate the whole 3D chart, though. All right, so looking in top view, oh, it looks like, OK, interesting. So I mean, really, this isn't necessarily telling us too much. We probably could have actually, yeah, we really could have just gotten this by looking at the panel. But it's telling us that for the entire year, for the whole time, the set point is 20 degrees Celsius. All right, yeah, that really did not merit a 3D chart, but uh, but I mean, but yeah, at least now now we know that we you know I don't know, we, we, I guess maybe we wouldn't have known that right off the bat unless we had hooked it up the year. But all right, our set point is 20 degrees Celsius. So I mean, that's actually that can be a little actually it's a little on the warm side sometimes. And I know I think I mean my parents can sometimes drop it down a little further, um, you know, because they wear long sleeve sweaters and stuff, and you know. So I think, I mean, I think that they might, at least in a, a good number of the, the spaces in the house, I think we can drop the, the heating set point down to, um, down to 18 or something. And, you know, that can actually end up, I mean, that can save a lot of energy. Um, as, you know, as I told you guys in that statistic. Actually, I should cite a source for that. I know, I know it was cited in one of the, the adaptive uh, comfort books that I read. Um, but in any case, I'm going to hook up 18 to the heating set point, and that'll then go through all those zones, and that'll change the heating set point to be 18. And, you know, and we can visualize the, the, the schedules that come off, you know, off the zones now and then see that, that, that that's changed. But, I mean, but, you know, I mean, you guys will hopefully trust that, uh, that it's been changed. And you'll be able to see in the results when you run the energy simulation. All right, so we changed the heating set point uh, back to that. And, uh, and let's see, and we can change, now let's change the, uh, the, cooling, the cooling set point too. Um, because the thing is, I mean, we actually, we had said earlier, right, that, uh, that my parents weren't really going to air condition because we have a, you know, a, a, an infiltration schedule or, or, or a schedule that mimics them opening up windows. So if they're going to open up windows, then maybe we really want to set, we'll set like the cooling set point to something that is so astronomically high that my parents would, you know, will never be turning on the air conditioning effectively. So, but first let's see what it is right now. Instead of uh, bringing up a whole, um, you know, big, big panel, we'll just see, all right, so the cooling set point is, okay, it's 25.5 degrees, degrees Celsius. Um, and I mean, that seems pretty standard, I guess, for a lot of residences. But uh, but yeah, but I'm going to say that, yeah, let's boost this up because my, my parents are not going to use air conditioning, let's say, in this new paradigm uh, where, you know, where they're just naturally ventilating. So we'll boost up the cooling, well, cooling set point to uh, like 45, something that's never going to get to in the house or, or anywhere in the New York climate unless, you know, unless it's you've sealed up yourself in a greenhouse in the summer or something. So, all right, so I'm going to hook that up to cooling set point. Um, and that'll then change, you know, change, that'll essentially effectively get rid of the cooling in our energy simulation. So you can right off the bat see that, that that's really useful for starting to customize uh, simulations. Because uh, you guys saw all the way back there that it was possible to set a certain zone as conditioned or not. But this allows you to be more precise about it to say like, okay, no, the heating's still there, but the cooling is not, like we're doing right now. Um, and, you know, and, and I'm going to say that you can set some other things with this while we're waiting for this. Okay, all right, well, I'm finally finished. Um, and so you can do things like changing the cooling setback and the heating setback. Um, but, you know, you guys actually see, you remember, like we saw on the chart there, that for the entire year, the cooling set point, or sorry, the heating set point was 20 degrees Celsius. Um, so the thing is, though, so the reality is that there is no heating setback, actually, for this schedule that, that comes with the, uh, with the apartment. Uh, that we're looking at here, that there is no setback. But, but I mean, for those of you who are not familiar with what a setback is, a setback is essentially, I mean, usually offices will have them. So, you know, like they'll say, like, we want it to be during the daytime. We want it when people are there. We want it to be, uh, you know, I don't know, like 20 degrees Celsius or 18 degrees Celsius in the workplace. 
Um, but you know, but but at night, you know, we don't have to keep it so warm because no one's in the space, and we just need it to you know make sure it's warm enough that you know that the computers and hardware don't get damaged. So maybe we'll have a setback which says that the temperature can drop all the way down to I don't know 15 Celsius or 12 Celsius, something lower than that. So that that value can change with the setback. But you can see if we were to try and change that here, that it well, all right, I can show you quickly. I mean, it's, I guess we're not totally pressed for for time, but you know, if we want to change like the setback to 12 or some 12 here or something you know it'll give us a warning that the apartment schedule doesn't have uh, doesn't have that uh, a setback and uh, I'm gonna fast forward because we've already waited through this two times okay and I waited all those few seconds just to show you this little error yeah the mid-rise apartment doesn't have you know doesn't have a setback um, and so you know that'll happen anytime you have a, a program without a setback I'm just so I'm just gonna get rid of this um, and again wait for a few more seconds <laughs> Uh, and, and see you on the other side. Okay, all right, so now now we've got honeybee zones with the set points defined the way that we like them. And finally, these are the things that we can go and we can take and we can plug into our run energy simulation uh, you know, component up here. And next time we run those zones through the energy simulation, their set points uh, will be changed to these values that we have right here. So that you know, it'll only start heating at 18 Celsius um, when it turns 18 Celsius inside and will only start cooling at, at 45 Celsius. And I mean, of course, also these are the zones that we can visualize, um, which oh, I guess we've lost in our top view here. Um, but you know, but you guys get the sense, you know, that that these are these are the zones now with their most recent properties. All right, so that's it. That's it for the the, the thermostat set points. Uh, in the next video, I'm going to show you guys how to uh, take into account context shading in your in your simulations, uh, and those are also you can, those are also tangentially related to schedules because you can actually apply schedules to shading uh, to change the transparency at different times of the year. So, all right, so we're going to do that in the next video. Thank you guys for watching this one, and be awesome.